Welcome back in, hockey fans. You have found your way into the neutral zone on IE Sports Radio. So much hockey to talk about tonight. The playoffs are well in hand, and the first round is not disappointing, nor is it going away anytime soon. Six of the eight series are guaranteed to go a minimum of six games. There's some great hockey going on. Six tied series heading into game fives. So much drama, so much action. But we do have one series that has wrapped up already. The Avalanche got out the brooms and swept the Predators out in the Central Division first round. Are we surprised? Zach and I will discuss that. And then we're starting to get some finalists rolling in. The Norris and Vezina Trophy finalists have been announced. So we will break down those for everybody as well and give our thoughts on who might be taking home some hardware. Finally, the NHL Draft Lottery was tonight. The Montreal Canadiens won the top pick we will break down the order and let you know where everybody is drafting this is the neutral zone buckle it on in stay out of the boards and of course stay out of the penalty box let's go And welcome into the Neutral Zone. I am Adam Kernick, along with Zach Puplis. Happy that you are here along with us on this Tuesday evening in May. What are we? May 10th now. The first round of the NHL playoffs is just giving us some excellent action and excellent drama. We will be breaking down that. We're going to be breaking down some finalists for the Vezina and Norris trophies and be giving everybody updates on the draft lottery and where everyone wound up selecting in the first round for this summer. Zach, how you doing tonight, man? Oh, I'm fantastic, Adam. How are you? Uh, feeling good. It was a it was a good weekend. My my wife and daughter got to get the tomato garden started. I got to watch some hockey. Life was good. Very nice. Yeah, the playoffs are heating up just like our weather today here here in Michigan. Yeah. Oh my goodness, did it get hot today? But yeah, you know, we basically we went from early spring straight to early summer. We skipped most <laughs> of the uh, most of the spring weather and just went straight to summer. Yeah, it's been been cloudy or rainy for the last couple of weeks, and now, boom, 80 or 90 degrees. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> yep. It's kind of just like predicting how these playoff series are going to go. And just when I think I have it figured out that, oh, this team's going to win tonight, they don't. Right. I mean, had you told me ahead of time that Carolina would be tied in the series going into game five here against Boston, I'd have told you no way. I figured Carolina in five and here they are guaranteed to at least go six. Yeah. That's crazy. <clears throat> um, yeah. I, one of the ones I've been following closest is uh, LA and Edmonton and yeah, they just keep tying up the series. <laughs> yeah. Well with that one, I know we talked a little bit about it last week. Mike Smith is so up and down in net that they just they need consistency in front of the net if you're Edmonton. And meanwhile, Jonathan Quick is revitalized. So suddenly, yeah, Los Angeles is awake and alive and very much in this series. Oh yeah, for sure. So we take a back quick in peek. The, oh, go ahead. In the twenty twelve twenty back in the twenty twelve, twenty fourteen shape when they went on their two cup runs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very looking very reminiscent there. Look at it, the scores real quick. The Hurricanes are up big against Boston tonight. They're 
just about ready to start the third period. It's three nothing Carolina. The Lightning are up two to one against Toronto right now with four minutes and change left in the second period. I'm surprised. Well, I am, and I'm not. I guess that that the Tampa Bay Toronto series has been as tight as it is. Just Tampa Bay's just been so dominant the last couple of years. I guess you just kind of assume that they get a free pass into the second round. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, especially the way that first that first game played out, uh, we thought it was all going to go Toronto's way. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they just blew them out of the water, and then Tampa was no, nah, no, nah, we're we're still in this, we're still alive. <laughs> we're Pizza Hut. We're still here. <laughs> yeah, we're still here. We're we're still here. <laughs> so yeah, as we as we look at this of the eight first round series six of them are tied going into game five so we know that six of these series will at least go six games all four series going on tonight are guaranteed to go six games and then the capitals panthers and the stars flames are guaranteed to go six games we might see pittsburgh and new york wrap up tomorrow night possibly But there is one series that is done. Colorado and Nashville. The Colorado Avalanche swept out the Nashville Predators. Zach, are you surprised at all? Not at all. Um, oh, you know, going into the season, we talked about which team had the best playoff odds and which best odds to win the whole cup, win the whole thing, win the Stanley Cup. And it was uh, Colorado. So, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, you look at the amount of goals Colorado scored. They scored seven twice. And they scored five in in game four. 21 goals in all in the series. Outscored Nashville 21 to nine. Yeah, I mean... You just look at they look at their star power. I think that that just kind of explains it all. I mean, McKinnon, Kale McCarr, uh, Landis Cog, so on. Yep, McKinnon got five goals in the series, five goals in four games. You'll you'll take those numbers. Yeah, uh, his quote from Monday night: uh, "We found a way. That's the key. You can't always win when you have your best. You have to find ways when you're not. Tonight was one of those cases." We just know with all the skill and talent we have that we were going to get one. Um, they're now in the Western Conference semis for the fourth straight season and second consecutive after sweeping the first round opponent. Yeah. I mean, no surprise there to see Colorado advance to the second round. The Yeah. So, uh, looks like they get St. Louis or Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. And, Frankly, I don't think they care which one they get either. I think they'll be I think they'll be looking at it as advantage Colorado. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it doesn't matter who they play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're they're at the definite advantage. So I do have to pick on Nashville a little bit. So some of this of course stems from my being a recovering Blackhawks fan. So, right. <laughs> so full disclosure. Did you see the silliness and shenanigans that Nashville yet again pulled before games three and four? No, I didn't. They announced that if anyone who bought tickets from outside of the Predators television viewing area and this is going to be determined okay. by the billing address attached to the credit card that was used. So if you were outside of Nashville, if you were outside of the Kentucky area or their immediate surrounding television where the where the Predators are, quote unquote, the home team. Sure, Tennessee and like the northern parts of you know Alabama and Georgia, maybe. Right. If you were buying tickets from outside of that area. Your credit card was refunded, and you were refused tickets. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Petty. Petty. And they've they've done this for years. I mean, when the Blackhawks were at the height of their dynasty, they would do this all the time. They didn't even just save it for playoff games. If the Blackhawks were coming to town and you had an Illinois billing address, you were refused tickets. They basically, it stems from too many visiting fans would buy tickets and come in and create a neutral atmosphere and they didn't like that. <laughs> but what if okay, so what if you're a Nashville fan but you moved away? You can't buy tickets if you're outside of that area. <laughs> Not directly I mean, from the team anyway. You've got a you'd have to get them from the scalpers or the the side markets, things like that. Oh sure, yeah. And that's wow. of course what that's happens. That- that is super petty. <laughs> it's very petty. So, but hey, we're we're talking about the same fan base that stole the the whole Red Wings tradition of throwing an octopus on the ice. Now they throw catfish on the ice, and on top of that, didn't they actually send a box of catfish, like dead catfish, to uh, Gary Bettman one time? Oh God, I think <laughs> they did. I think you're right. <laughs> So, I mean, are we are we really surprised that they would be this petty? <laughs> no, not at all. Not not in the slightest. Are we surprised <laughs> at the pettiness of the Nashville Predators? So I can't say that I shed any tears for Nashville getting eliminated from the playoffs. In fact, thank you, Colorado. Would you like me to play the world's smallest violin for them? Wah, oh. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Darn, the Predators got eliminated. Shucks. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> oh, 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 that's too bad. <laughs> no, it's really not. It's really not too bad at all. So, yeah. so we do have one series down. Colorado is advanced into the second round. The Western semis, the I still like calling it the Central Division Final. I I'm going to go with that and, until Gary Bettman gets the message and turns it into that. So right, I I like it. I like calling it the Central Division Final. So that's what I'm going to call it. The second round is the Division Final. Um, oh, and the Hurricanes just went up four to nothing. Shiny object. Uh-huh. Ooh, here you go. Uh. Kale McCarr, anytime you get a chance to end team season, you take it and run. You try at least. For us tonight, there was a lot of ups and downs, but we wanted this one. I I think just the resilience in general showed from our group. Absolutely. And let's face it, Colorado, they've been here before. They've gotten past the first round, first round before. You know that once you've got a team on the ropes – don't let them get back up because you don't know what they'll do. Oh yeah, you keep your foot on the gas. Don't take your foot off the throat. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All those, all those wonderful mixed sports metaphor cliches that we've all heard <laughs> a million times before. Right. Um, oh, so so that was Kale McCarr's quote. Um, and here's another quote. And then I think you'll you'll see where I'm going with this, based on who who they who I'm quoting. <laughs> Uh, you never want to go out for nothing, uh, Roman Yossi said. It's tough right now. I thought our two home games, we played a lot better. But, yeah, we didn't get it done. We didn't get a win. So, yeah, it's definitely disappointing. Woo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's definitely disappointing to not only lose but to get swept. I mean, and Nashville didn't play poorly. I mean, you did – they did go to overtime in game two. The Avalanche took that one two to one. Um, very, you know, great back and forth defensive game. You had you had Connor Ingram make what was it forty nine <laughs> saves in game two. My gosh, I just the fact that Colorado got off fifty one shots in a game. That's <laughs> right. Nashville, keep the puck. Get the puck. Keep it away from those guys in blue and red. 
Your goalie's begging you, please. <laughs> for the love of God. <laughs> for the love of God, go play down there for a little while, kids. I'm tired of this. <laughs> right. You can only do so much. you got to give them some kind of support, man. <laughs> exactly. 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 But, you know, give give him sh- give him credit give him credit he stopped 49 of them that's usually enough for a game and a half yeah <laughs> Cole Cole McCarr also had i think i saw six assists in that in that series my goodness just the puck movement and the the overall balance from Colorado yes of course McKinnon we know that McKinnon's going to be boy wonder and, and score a bazillion goals, but they're so deep. They just, they're such a balanced team. I'm not surprised at all that they got past Nashville and yeah, they should be, they should be projected to beat either. They should be expected to beat either St. Louis or Minnesota. Yeah, exactly. Real quick. Um, and then I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the time and then we'll go to break real quick. Who would you see more likely to upset Colorado in the second round, St. Louis or Minnesota? Uh, I would say Minnesota. I mean, haven't they been on a tear this year, or at least in the second half of the season? They have, yes. I so they, Go ahead. So Colorado probably won St. Louis then. Yeah, I'd, I'd say Minnesota too, if for no other reason, Marc-Andre Fleury. The you little know, flower. The flower, <laughs> yes. I mean, goalies can carry you through the playoffs. They can carry you through a series. And if a goalie gets hot, and we know Flurry can get hot, not that... Uh, uh, Bennington? Bennington. I, I had two different Bing names going through my head. Thank you. Not that Bennington can't. And he got his first playoff win in, what was it, 10 he had lost nine straight playoff starts before they won over the weekend in Minnesota. Oh, wow. Yeah, I saw I, – I think it was – Bennington had lost nine – he had last won in the cup-clinching game in 2019, and then he had lost nine straight playoff starts. But Ooh. they beat, they beat uh, Minnesota over the weekend. That was that was game three, and Bennington played great in that game too. They won that one five to one. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. I'm looking at the wrong game. That was game three, game four. They won five to two to tie the series up. Well, we've, we've seen a resurgence from Quick. Why not a resurgence from Bennington? It's possible. Yep, yep. So just good balanced play all around in the first round. Now you're Colorado. You get to kick back and watch, eat some popcorn, and just hope that. The Wild and the Blues go seven games and kill each other in the process. Right. <laughs> well, then that always always brings up the eternal the eternal debate, you know, rust versus rust. <laughs> isn't there a – isn't rust the last name of one of the goalies? Rust? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Eh. We'll look that up later. Um, but, yeah. But, 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 yeah, I mean, it brings up a good point. I mean, okay, so – yeah, they finished up their series real quick, and now they have a chance to get some rest. But on the flip side, the other guys are they're fresh, they're active, they're they're still moving every single day. You know, getting either practice or a game in, and you know, playing every every other day. Um, so they're the muscle memories there, and they're they're fresh and getting all the connection with their teammates, and so I, I you can see it both ways. <laughs> Yeah, I, Colorado's a veteran team. They've been here before. I am not worried about a little bit of extra rest hurting Colorado's chances in a series. It maybe that means they drop game one, but it it's not going to hurt Colorado that much. Yeah, this is this is true. <clears throat> All right, you mentioned Roman Yossi and one of those quotes. We are going to talk I about did. him next. We're going to talk about him next. We've got, he is one of the finalists for the Norris Trophy. We're going to break down who Yossi is going up against in that and also the finalist for the Vezina Trophy. This is the Neutral Zone would, here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What was that, Zach? 
Oh, I was just going to say I was teasing it without actually teasing it. <laughs> and you were doing an excellent job of it. All right. We will pay off well, that you. tease on the other side of this break. Sports fans, are you looking for a sports show that maybe isn't 100% about sports? Then you might want to check out the Sports Couple Perspectives right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Most sports shows cover only scores and stats, and while we're not opposed to that, we dig a little deeper into sports issues and some of the hottest topics in athletics. In addition to sports, we take a journey through my neck of the woods, pop culture, with movie reviews of both sports and non-sports films. Speaking of pop culture, make sure to participate in our game nights, where we quiz each other on our specialties, and you, the listeners, can win IE Sports Radio apparel. We always have a great time learning more about each other's worlds, one show at a time. So join us each week on the Sports Couple Perspectives, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. Sports fans, are you looking for the latest on Northern California sports? Then take a trip out west with me, your host, Gina G, on Reppin' the NorCal Sports, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'll be bringing it to you all the way live every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And it's always a packed show. I'll bring you everything. Dynastic 49ers. The bite of the San Jose Sharks. Torture of the San Francisco Giants. The Golden State Warriors that we still believe. Then take you across the bay to the rise and grind of the Oakland A's. I've got you covered on college ball from the Cal Bears to the Stanford Cardinal, so that no matter what, reppin' in NorCal sports is always reppin' the Bay. So if you bleed red and gold, or you're looking to keep an eye out west in them thar hills, don't miss me, Gina G, on reppin' in NorCal sports. Catch me every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and I'll have your fandom repped harder than a trio of Defenders Garden Stephen Curry before his buzzer beater is Gucci. What is going on, everybody? This is Ben Matello, the host of the Yinza Report, right here on IU Sports Radio. I'm bringing you the latest in the Steel City, the city of champions, from the Steelers, the Penguins, the Pirates, as well as the college game with both Penn State and Pitt. You could join me 
every Tuesday afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time right here on IE Sports Radio where I'll be talking about everything from the Steel City, the City of Champions, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davidson. It's your boy, the entire lot. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at FastBreakISR. D-Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That gives you guys spending time on a Sunday. Tune in. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And welcome back in, hockey fans, to the Neutral Zone here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Lots of those shows that you just heard have teams still active in the playoffs. For example, the SoCal Supreme, the Los Angeles Kings, they play later on tonight against Edmonton, so you can check in on them. Yinzer Report, of course, the Pittsburgh Penguins going on tomorrow. Ben Matello is a big Big Penguins fan, so be sure to check out those shows and other ones here on the network. And Zach was so kind to remind me during the break that we need to do our housekeeping. Here on IE Sports Radio, we are sponsored by the Southern California Warriors Semi-Pro Football Team. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to get filmed to try out for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. 
The SoCal Warriors have been in a quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give Semi-Pro Sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. Find them on Twitter at SoCal Warriors, Instagram at Southern California underscore Warriors, and Facebook by searching Southern California Warriors. IE Sports Radio is available on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search IE Sports Radio. And IE Sports Radio is celebrating its birthday this weekend. We turn eight years old. Old To celebrate, Larry B. is going to be doing a special three-hour edition of The Defining Moment this coming Saturday, May 14th, right at noon Eastern time to celebrate. Come hang out with your favorite IE Sports Radio personalities and be sure to check out all the shows as they all celebrate in their own unique ways. Zach, we got to figure out what we're going to do to celebrate our birthday and then of course thank you for continuing to make us your direct feed for all that is sports this show is available to you also on twitter at iesr neutral zone i am at adam underscore kernick he is at the pupless Zach, you did an excellent tease before the break there about wanting to talk about Roman Yossi and the other finalists for the Norris Trophy for Best Defensive Man in the NHL this season. Who are the finalists and who do you like, Zach? But of course, um, Tampa Bay Lightning's Victor Hedman, um, Roman Yossi, as Apple mentioned, as well as uh, Kale McCarr from the Avalanche. They are all the Norris Trophy finalists. Uh, the Norris Trophy is awarded annually, quote, to the, defense, to the defensive player who demonstrates throughout the season the greatest all-around ability in the position. Members of the Professional Hockey Writers Association vote on the award each year. Uh, the winner will be revealed during the 2022 NHL Awards at some point during the conference finals and Stanley Cup final with dates and times to be announced. Uh, <clears throat> Victor Hedman is a finalist for the sixth consecutive season. He won the award in 17-18, placed third in 16-17, 18-19, and 20-21. <laughs> this season, Hedman recorded career-high goals, career-high totals in goals, 20, assists, 65, and points, 85, while anchoring Tampa's blue line in route to a 110-point season, third best in franchise history. Uh, uh, Nashville's you know, Roman Yossi is a Norris finalist for the second time after becoming the Predators' first ever winner of the award for his performance in 1920, 19 and tw- the 19 and 20 season. <laughs> uh, during the 21 and 22 campaign, uh, y- Yossi became the highest scoring defenseman in the last 29 years, producing 23 goals and 96 points in 80 games. Only six defenders in the past 50 years have earned more points in a single campaign than Yossi, who helps guide Nashville to an eighth straight postseason appearance. I was thinking that they weren't in the playoffs last year and they made it back, but uh, just kidding, eight straight years now. Um, finally, Colorado's Kale McCarr uh, is the finalist for the second consecutive season and is looking to become the first ever winner in Avalanche history. Oh, wow. I didn't know they had never had one yet. That's awesome. Uh, McCarr led all defensemen this season with 28 goals and was second in points, 86, as one of Colorado's most dynamic players in a franchise record 119-point campaign. The 23-year-old won the NHL Calder Trophy in 2019 as Rookie of the Year and is the fourth defenseman in NHL history to be a finalist in any award category through each of his first three seasons. How cool is that? Colorado's good they're young. They're deep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards Kill McCarr on that one. Yeah. Roman, Roman Yossi's yeah. been there, done that. It wouldn't be inappropriate, but it also would feel a little stale. Yeah, true. Well, and, and Hedman's won it before, too. So give it to the newbie. There you go. 
I like it. Um, yeah, I've been I've been following him since he uh, since he got drafted, and you know, so so much of our time is spent, you know, paying attention to the NFL, and and you see guys get drafted, you know, with the draft what you know what two weeks ago now, um, at like the the peak of the off season, and then you don't actually get to see them play until you know a couple months later when the season starts, and so the NHL draft is such that it, it just turns that notion on its head because, you know, Kale McCarr was playing, playing in the frozen four and they get all done. And there's the NHL draft. And then like two weeks later, he was already playing for the avalanche in the Stanley cup playoffs. I mean, it's just such a, such a whirlwind turnaround. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it can be on the other hand. I mean, it can be, you draft a kid and then they get, shuffled off to the minors for three, four, five years. And then you finally see them, you know, years later down the road. So you get, you get the two extremes there with the NHL draft. Well, well, yeah. And, and, you know, unlike basketball and football where they, you know, they finish college or, you know, one year, three years, whatever. um, And they go straight to the, the draft and the pros with, you know, baseball and hockey, like they can go back to school even too, you know, if they need more seasoning or whatever. Yeah. That's always the wildest thing is that guys can get drafted and with the blessing of their NHL team, yeah, (laughs) stay in college for another year. Stay, stay there, work some of the yips out, work some of the kinks out and then come to us when you're ready. Wasn't that, wasn't that with Owen power this year? Isn't that what happened with him? Yes, yeah, that is what happened with Power this year. Yeah, is he got drafted by the Sabres, stayed in college for a little while, and then when the college season wrapped up, he came and played for Buffalo. Yeah, I, again, that's I, <laughs> it's just so counter to what we're so used to with the with the pro leagues. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's very different, very unique. Speaking of basketball, I see Davidson Crooks jumped into the chat room. Good even Davidson. I'm sure he is just neck deep in NBA playoffs at this point. Uh, I'll be honest. If you were to let me guess, I might be able to name a couple of teams that are in the NBA playoffs at this point, but on the spot, I definitely can't. But thank you for taking time out of playoffs to, to give us a listen, Davidson. I appreciate it. Davidson is one of the co-hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio on Sunday nights. So they're doing playoff I, I talk, got, too. I got you, Karnick. Oh? Uh, Golden State Warriors, Memphis Grizzlies, 76ers, the Heat, the Celtics. Uh Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's enough. I, <laughs> none of them are the Bulls, so. <laughs> or the Pistons. <laughs> or the Pistons. Womp, womp. Womp, womp. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Karen, what do we need? Do we get extra points for, for synchronizing our womp womps? <laughs> uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to say. He's, he's pulling double duty tonight. He's listening to us, but he's also... Uh, he he's told us here in the chat that he's doing some public address announcing at a at a lacrosse game tonight. So he's only got one ear on us tonight. Oh well, okay. I guess we can cut him some slack. <laughs> I know. All right. So Zach broke down the Norris Trophy finalists. We also have earlier today the Vezina Trophy finalists. Now this is for the best goalie in the NHL as voted on by the NHL general managers. And unlike with the Norris trophy guys where, where two of them are guys that, you know, Hedman and Yossi, where their names come up frequently every year, all three finalists are first time finalists for the Vezina this year. We've got Jacob Markstrom from Calgary Yusei Saros from Nashville, the recently departed Nashville Predators, and Igo Shesterkin from the New York Rangers. Markstrom went 37, 15, and 9 in 63 games for the Flames this season. He was the NHL's leader with nine 
shutouts. Finished with a goals against average of 2.22 and a save percentage of 922. He had his best season this year as far as wins with 35, with 37, excuse me, and in starts, 63. This was his best goals against average and his best save percentage and his shutouts. So Jacob Markstrom very, Markstrom, very deserving there for Calgary. And Calgary, of course, they're the number one seed in the Pacific, so that always helps when you're on a good team, too. You say Soros led the NHL in games played. He started and played in 67 games for the Predators this season, going 38, 25, and 3. He... Tied for sixth with four shutouts and was eighth in save percentage. He had a 918 save percentage. Goals against average, 2.64, right about in the middle of the league. However, he did all this. He faced the second most shots in the league, over 2,100 shots faced. Which means he also, yeah, which means he also made the second most saves in the league. He had 1,934 saves. That's a lot of ice bags after the game is done and a lot of time in the tub. Uh, Saros, of course, he helped Nashville qualify for the playoffs. It was their, what, sixth or eighth year in a row of making the playoffs. Saros would be the eighth, thank you. Saros would be the second Predators goalie to ever win the war, to win the Vezina Trophy. He would join Pecorine, who won it back in the 17 18 season. And then yep. finally, Igor Shesterkin. Shesterkin was 36, 13, and 4. In 53 games, he had 52 starts for the Rangers. He had the best goals against average in the NHL, 2.07, and his save percentage was the best, 9.35. Had six shutouts, um, and in 26, so in half of his starts, he had a save percentage of at least 9.40. He also was just insane on opponents' power plays. He had a save percentage of 929 on power plays. That'll that'll turn the tide. That'll make your power play look at or your your penalty kill look a heck of a lot better. And you're the Rangers when you're saving 93 percent of those shots. Yeah. However, of course, the Rangers are one loss away from getting eliminated from the postseason, but that doesn't uh, come into play here for for these awards. This is all based on regular season. At least it's supposed to be. They're not supposed to take anything from the postseason into account when when they do these. Uh, Mar- Chesterkin, excuse me, he would be the third Rangers goalie to win the award since 1982. He would join. There's no way I'm going to get this name right. John <laughs> Van Bisbrook. And, of course, King Henrik Lundqvist. Good old Lundqvist. Well- yeah. <laughs> I can get the so Swedish I... name just fine. Van Biersbrock, I hope I got that right. I, I really hope <laughs> I got that right. Um, Harrison Glazer does the Rangers on the show that never sleeps tomorrow. I can reach out to him and see how he pronounces it, see if he does it any better. He won yeah. it in 86. Well, I wasn't alive yet. Yeah. I, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, first since Henrik King Hen- King Henry uh, in 2012, um, and even if they do get eliminated from the playoffs tomorrow by the Penguins, you gotta look at that and say, okay, 
how long has Henrik been gone? Is it one year? Is this his first year out of the, the league? A couple years now he's been out. Okay. Well, yeah. Even if they do get eliminated tomorrow, you've got to look at that and say, he's doing a bang-up job if he's already getting nominated for the Vezina, you know, only a couple of years in. And for as consistent as Henrik was, you're just trying to, you're just trying to keep that, that, uh, that trend going, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. You're still, you're still skating in the shadow of King Henry there in New York. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great point. Yeah. So, so Chester can just getting nominated helps to kind of, plant his flag a little bit there looking at the three anybody jump out at you from out of from all those descriptions first of all um well they're they're all first timers like you said um uh let's see here To me, I'm eliminating Yusei Saros right away. And it's not just because he's the Predators goalie. It's not just because of that. So Nashville fans, don't don't come crying to me. <laughs> you're, throwing, you're throwing him a bone, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's, to me, he's, he's a very deserving finalist, but he's number three of the three, to, in, in my opinion. Saros would be third. I I want to lean towards Chesterkin actually. I he was you know you had the best the best save percentage. You had the best goals against average. Six shutouts. That that number on on the penalty kill, you know, that 929 save percentage on the penalty kill. That's just fantastic. I like Chesterkin. I I like Markstrom too. You know, there's there's absolutely something to be said for getting nine shutouts in a season. That's that's huge. And what what did he start? Sixty three games. I mean, you're talking twice a month. You're shutting a team out. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. But I like Shesterkin. I like Shesterkin for it. I yeah. Looking at that save percentage again. Yeah, I'm going to go with you on, with Shesterkin. All right, so now that we've out there, of course, Igor Shesterkin, I'm sorry, we just jinxed you. You now have zero chance. Yeah, <laughs> we have jinxed him, yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have completely and totally jinxed it. All right, we are going to take one more break, and then when we come back, the draft lottery was tonight. Woohoo! Everybody get out your lottery tickets. We play Powerball. Who won? Where does everybody line up? We will discuss that on the other side of this break. This is the Neutral Zone on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What is going on, everybody? My name is Harrison Glazer, and we're coming at you from the show that never sleeps podcast. I cover the Jets, the Islanders, the Nets, and the Yankees. This is TMS, and I cover the Mets, Knicks, Rangers, and the Giants. Our show is live every Wednesday through Spreaker and a bunch of other ways to get our content. Again, we're the show that never sleeps podcast. We talk about all those New York sports. It's a lot of fun. We get into all of it. Please tune in. Again, that's Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And we look forward to having you guys right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. If you're someone who wakes up each morning with a list of sporting events to go along with your to-do list for the day, then you just might be a diehard. The world of sports is as vast as the ocean is deep, including the major leagues, the minor leagues, the colleagues, and everything in between. This is me, your boy Larry B. of IE Sports Radio, welcoming you to join me every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on The Defining Moment, a show that focuses on what really matters in the sports world. 
sports themselves and nothing outside of them. Once again, tune in for the defining moment with me, boy Larrabee, every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on IE Sports Radio, right here on Spreaker.com. We'll see you there. And welcome back into the neutral zone on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Again, defining moment, a special edition of that this Saturday at 12 Eastern to celebrate IE Sports Radio's eighth birthday. You definitely want to check that out. One more segment for us here tonight before we turn things over to Kale Henderson and Sin City Sports talking all things Vegas. The NHL draft lottery was tonight. They did Powerball in the NHL. The 16 teams that have been eliminated from playoff contention before the playoffs started. So, sorry, Nashville, you weren't part of this. Darn. They get to... (laughs) I... Boy, I've just got it in for Nashville tonight. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so. They're the Arizona Coyotes in the playoffs. <laughs> I, no, because the Coyotes, I just, they're cute and they're cuddly and they're just kind of fun. No, this is, there's definitely, there's definitely something behind this. I have to investigate this more, I think, of, there's definitely something there, some twisting there with Nashville. All right, do, so. Do you need to- do you need to lay down on the long black couch and talk to the doctor about it? <laughs> uh, very possibly. Very possibly. All right. Uh, yeah, we've done such a good job of not going off the rails tonight. We're getting close, though. All right. Right. All right. So after the NHL played Powerball tonight, here is how the the draft went. The Montreal Canadiens won the first overall pick. Now, they came in with the best chance of getting the first overall pick. They wound up getting it. Second was the New Jersey Devils. They came in. They had just the fourth best chance to get that. So a little bit of a surprise there. The Arizona Coyotes draft third. The Kraken fourth. And then the Flyers will wind up with fifth out of the out of the lottery. So now we go th- we go through and here is the order for the 16 teams that did not make the playoffs. First Canadians, second Devils, third Coyotes, fourth Kraken, fifth Flyers, sixth would have been the Blackhawks, but they had to trade the pick to Columbus since Chicago did not wind up winning the winning one of the first two picks in the lottery. So the Blue Jackets go sixth, Senators seventh, Red Wings eighth, Sabres ninth, Ducks tenth, San Jose Sharks eleventh, Blue Jackets again at twelve, New York Islanders who just fired their head coach Barry Trotz yesterday, they draft thirteenth. 14th Winnipeg Jets, 15th the Vancouver Canucks, and then finally at 16, the Buffalo Sabres wind up with the pick. It would have belonged to Las Vegas, but the Jack Eichel trade, they wind up sending their first round pick to the Sabres. So Buffalo and Columbus both have two picks inside the top 16. That winds up being the NHL draft for all of the non playoff qualifying teams. Well, it's, it's actually going to have some home cooking to it as well, because apparently the, the draft is going to be held in Montreal and with Montreal having the first pick, uh, there you go. Yeah. If this were the NBA, somebody would be dropping a conspiracy theory right now. I'm not going right. to do that. <laughs> Uh, Canadian general manager was quoted as saying, um, it's a very exciting outcome for us. Our fans, I'm sure, will be thrilled, especially with the draft being held in Montreal, to have all that anticipation and excitement leading into it. Yeah, that should be should be nice for Montreal to get a chance to to host the draft and be able to enjoy their first overall pick. That'll be nice for nice for the Canadians. So as we get 
more into the off season, a little closer to the draft, we'll pull up and and take a look more at who might be going where in all that. But we are just about out of time for tonight. Before we go out of here, before we hit the horn, we do have a final in Carolina. The Hurricanes five, Bruins one. And then the Lightning and the Maple Leafs are all knotted up at three with nine minutes left to go in that game. So we might be going to overtime in Toronto. So we've had one game be a blowout. We've had another game be very close. The Blues in the Wild, meanwhile, they have dropped the puck. No score about five minutes into the first period. All right. Well, there was the horn, so we all know what that means. We got to get out of here. Zach, any final thoughts tonight before we get out of here? Well, just excited to see another game with the Kings and Oilers. It should be should be pretty even matchup. I hope so. Yeah, it should be should be a good one tonight. Of course, Mike Smith in net and Jonathan Quick in net for the Kings, as it has been all series long, all playoff long, pretty much lots of fun that'll do it for us tonight coming up right after us of course is K.L. Henderson and Sin City Sports talking all things Las Vegas I'm sure there will be some discussion of the Kings, word came down today earlier today that Jack Eichel basically played the entire season hurt he had a broken bone of one sort or another so I'm sure that will be a topic of discussion there for Kale. As for us, next week, the first round should be done. We'll be able to look at second round matchups and do some previews from there. We will we'll see what we've got. We'll also have more finals, the Calder Trophy uh, for Rookie of the Year, and, of course, the Hart Trophy. We should have a finals for the Hart Trophy by next week. We'll see where everything falls, and... What else there will be to talk about as we as we get closer and closer and deeper into the NHL playoffs? For IE Sports Radio, I am Adam Karnick. He is Zach Puplis. A big thank you to our sponsors, the Southern California Warriors. Thank you to Larry B. for all the hard work he does. He's getting married this weekend, so congratulations to Larry. Thank you to Taryn Woo! and to Davidson for hanging out in the chat room with us. Finally, thank you guys for coming and listening to us every week. We really do appreciate it. And until next week, stay out of the penalty box, everybody. This is Adam Karnick and Zach Puppelis for IE Sports Radio signing off.